Right, for today's quick video, uh, I'm going to show you a technique that I use for uh, thinning my acrylic paints. Uh, very cheap, it's, it's, it's good for beginners if you're not uh, wishing to spend a lot of money on the expensive sets that you could get from, you know, maybe Army Paint or Vallejo. So you're going to need these dropper bottles. Uh, I'm using 15 milliliters that I bought from eBay. They come with the cap and, and the nozzle, as you can see. Um, and you, you're going to need something hard to drop inside. I'm using ball bearings. I ended up finding that ball bearings sometimes react with the uh, water. And it, it might be darkening your, your colors a little bit, but uh, it just needs to be heavy enough and, and small enough to feed into the bottle, as you can see here. You're also going to need some acrylic paint. You, you can pick from a variety of marks. I'm, I'm using from Royal Langnico. Um, these are not the cheapest, uh, but they're not so as expensive as, as a set you would buy. So I, I bought these 24 color uh, ones. And as you can see, some I, I use a lot more than the others. Uh, the white, for example, I, I ended up buying a, a bigger uh, tub here. Uh, this is quite cheap, by the way. Uh, I would probably spend a little bit more, but you, you can find any type of acrylic paint. What usually changes between one and the other is the amount of pigment and the medium. So yeah, don't, don't buy like the cheapest one, but you also don't need to, to pay for professional grade type of uh, paints. And because you're going to be thinning that down to using the airbrush, I really recommend you getting one that is really high pigmented because it, it could take a lot more layers uh, to fill the and, and, and paint your models if there's not enough pigment on it. So as you, you can see here, the first step is to squeeze some of that paint into the bottles. Uh, I'm using roughly a ratio that is uh, two to one. So two parts of paint to one part of water. You'll see that in, in, a, in a second. Uh, that gives me a consistency that I'm, I'm really happy with my airbrush. So as I said, just drop a few, uh, drop a bit of paint in there and put almost the, the half, half of it uh, uh, as water. The dilution ratio will vary, I think, from person to person. Uh, I'll show you a, a, a quick tip that I'm using for, for my paint and also for the equipment that you're using. So some airbrushes, if, if you're running with a really thin tip, you probably want to thin that down a little bit more. Uh, but people will say, yeah, you need to dilute that to a milk consistency type of paint. But sometimes it it's, depends from people to people. So as you can see, it's, we'll, it will start almost like a wash. But as soon as you, you uh, close it and cap it properly, you just need to shake so everything is mixed properly and you, you will end up achieving a nice consistency. So just close that off camera and shake it. Shake it as much as you can, just to make sure everything is uniform. And this is why you need the ball bearing or something hard to help you with the mixing. So now just to show you the consistency that I got with this mix. Uh, again, I can thin that down a little bit more if I, if I want like a glaze or, or just a wash type of thing, just adding a little bit more water. But overall, this is the consistency that I use uh, to feed directly to my airbrush. As you can see, it can also be used with the regular brush and you can hand paint details and, and anything like that. So. Uh, I usually have all my, my paints ready to, to be used in these in this bottles. The good thing about this method is that you can always mix different tones and colors and have it ready. So it's, it's sometimes difficult to find exactly the same tone if, you, if you're using a, uh, a painting that you mixed previously in the palette. So if you have that ready, you can use it several times. I'm just going to show you one more time. Uh, I'm going to do a, a mix now. Uh, I need some uh, gray. And with gray, you usually have like warm tones and, and cool tones. 
So I need a, a bit of a cool one, so I'm gonna mix white, black, and a little bit of blue. So as we did first, I'm just gonna get some space here to avoid doing any mess. I'll start with the white, because this is probably gonna be the biggest ratio. Uh, this one is a little bit more tricky because I cannot put the the nozzle of the the tube inside the cap Just use something to push that that in like a toothpick for example, but sometimes it can get a little bit messy Some water also helps to push the, the paint down if it's too thick. This process seems a little bit messy now, but it gets really convenient when you have uh, a bottle ready to drop a few drops into the airbrush and start airbrushing it. You don't need to do anything else. It's all ready to go. Right, I squeeze that in a little bit. So I've got the, the base as white. And as I said, uh, I'm gonna drop a little bit of blue because I want like a, a cooler tone of grey and probably just a very tiny drop of black. I'm just gonna be a little bit more careful here. I have already some diluted blue so I'm probably gonna be using that because it's gonna be easier to hit the bottom. And I'll do the same for the black, just because my my tip here for the bottle is pretty much clogged with white paint. Again, uh, it is very diluted now, as you can see, it's not uniform. So just cap the tube with the little bottle and start shaking so you get uh, a uniform mixture. This is gonna be critical and every time you, you leave it sitting for a while, just shake it again so you get the uh, all the elements mixed. See, starting already to uh, become a, a solid color. As you can see, this time it seems to be too thin because the paint doesn't stick to the, the walls of the bottle. So I'll probably need to add a little bit more medium into it. And this is probably what I would use for a glaze or maybe a wash. So this is how usually I gauge the consistency of my mix. See, it pretty much doesn't stick to the wall. It's too thin. Uh, if you look at my red bottle there in the background, that's completely red. So it is a bit thicker than this gray one. So I just added a little bit more of white. And as you can see, it takes a little bit longer for the, the bottle to clear up again. Uh, I'm still not happy with that, but I'll probably need to add a few more um, medium. But this is the, the process. So again, it varies from airbrush to airbrush, people to people. So keep trying until you find the best consistencies for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.